Uh, welcome everyone. I'm Hugh Edwards from Gomo Learning and uh, thank you very much for tuning in to this latest in our series of mini demonstrations of different features of Gomo. Um, that uh, we've had uh, a great interest in this one again uh, this week, uh, which is very encouraging. Uh, so we're just going to give it a couple of minutes to I can see that we have uh, people tuning in as I speak. Uh, so, so welcome to you all. Uh, so, uh, just to explain that these uh, these series of uh, Gomo weekly demonstrations are designed to be uh, bite-sized introductions to different aspects of Gomo, both for people who are completely new to Gomo, so maybe you're just exploring Gomo, but also uh, I can see that we have uh, some of our long long-time customers as well here. So, welcome to you all. Um, so, that for you it will act as a as a recap. Um, and uh, the subject of today's webinar is about responsiveness in GOMO. So uh, by that we mean how you can create content which is going to run across any screen size, any device, any orientation. So we're going to have a look at exactly how GOMO does that and how you can also tailor that as well through the use of uh, display conditions. And also we're going to be having uh, a quick look at a, a, a new thing that we released just this morning, uh, the new theme called Vinti, uh, one of the standard Gomo themes. It, if you're a Gomo user, you'll see in your Gomo account. And that does some quite interesting things in terms of responsiveness and particularly how it behaves on smartphones. So uh, I can see that we still have uh, uh, people tuning in. So I'm just going to give it another minute or so uh, before we actually dive into the subject and I'll then share my screen. Um, just one thing to point out is that uh, please feel free to ask questions or to comment, to share your experiences on this subject through the questions panel that you'll see in your GoToWebinar box. I'll try and make sure that I monitor that as, as we go through. So we're going to take about 20 minutes today to, uh, to have a look at uh, the issue and uh, the concept of responsiveness, adaptiveness, and the Vinti theme today. And uh, but I'm, if you do have uh, specific questions, I'm happy to stay on after that, and we can uh, dive into those as as, as well. So um, let me see. Just see that a few more people are tuning in. And uh, okay, just while we're waiting for for those people to join, I'm just going to share my screen. And uh, I think I've clicked the right buttons there. So just to check that this is working, uh, could you just uh, raise your hand? You'll see the little hand raise icon in your GoToWebinar panel. If you can see my screen and hear me, uh, that's, that's great. Thank you. Okay, let, let's get going. So uh, just to formally introduce myself again. So I'm Hugh Edwards from Gomo Learning. This is the latest in our weekly series of uh, mini Gomo demos, where each week we look at uh, a different aspect of, of Gomo, designed both for people who are completely new to Gomo, and also as a recap for existing Gomo users. And we hope maybe pointing out some things that, uh, uh, that you might not have noticed before. So, so let's have a look at this issue of responsiveness. So how can we create a course in GOMO which is going to run across any screen size, any device, in any orientation and still look great? And the key message here is that GOMO is going to do that automatically for you. So the whole concept of GOMO is that you can just focus on your learning content and then GOMO will take care of the look and feel of your course through what we call themes, the style templates, which uh, we covered in, uh, in one of the uh, mini webinars a couple of weeks ago. Um, and uh, in terms of the, of the screen sizing, then GOMO is going to take care of that for us through what we call the block and column layout. So uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, just dive into GOMO. I'm going to quickly create a new course. So here I am in my GOMO account. Let's create a new course. And as usual, if uh, here, what GOMO is going to do is just ask me a series of questions just to get us up and running. We can change all of this later. 
So let's just give it a name. Of course, I could create a single course and make it available in multiple languages. Again, that's something that uh, uh, we cover in uh, one of our other uh, mini webinars. So I'm just going to create a single language course here. And this is where we choose the theme, the style template uh, here. So um, I'm just going to start off with one of the built-in themes called Duo, but one thing that you will see now as of this morning is the new Vinci theme, and I'm going to come back to the Vinci theme towards the end of this session just to show you uh, what's new and what's special about the Vinci theme, particularly in terms of, of mobile delivery of your courses. So I'm just going to create, uh, select the Duo course. And now I'm just going to say that in terms of the structure of this simple course, I want an introduction, I want a menu, I might have four learning topics to start, and now I can choose the elements which are going to appear on the toolbars. So I'm going to add in help and glossary, uh, resources, and I'll take the defaults for the others there. So I'm just going to click create. So what Gummy is doing here is just building our initial course outline and it's uh, just going to create a sample course for us here. It's going to put in some sample content, which we can immediately begin to use to see how this is going to work across devices and screen sizes. And by the way, for, uh, for those who have just joined, uh, welcome to you. Thank you very much for tuning in this uh, mini webinar on responsive design in GOMO. Please feel free to answer, ask questions or add comments through the question panel that you'll see there in your GoToWebinar panel. So here we've got our top level structure, introduction leading to a menu, simple branching out to our learning topics. But remember that you can have more complex branching than that. You can create dynamic branching so the learner can be guided through the course, maybe based on say their job role or, or region and so forth. But what we're focusing on today is responsiveness. So I'm going to select actions, preview. And so it just opens up the preview tab there. And it just loads up the sample content that Gomez put into my course. And remember that all the things like this default background image and uh, the fonts used and the transparencies and so forth and the colors, that's all coming from the theme, the duo theme. But what I want to have a look at here, if I click start, and now we have our menu buttons. Again, the look and feel comes from the theme. And so here, now the, the key thing here in terms of responsive design is you can quite clearly see the block and column layout. And this block and column layout is how Gomo is going to make sure it's going to run across any screen size, any device. So here we have a block with a single column. But here we have a block with two columns, so a left hand and a right hand, hand column. And things like the color and transparency of the columns, again, that's all coming from the theme. But what we can do here in preview uh, with Gomo is immediately say, well, how is this going to look, say, on a standard tablet? So again, the preview gives us this instant preview of how it will look on, on a tablet. So we can see here that Gomo simply reflowed the text here, so you won't get any text cutoffs or overruns. And this can be particularly important. It can be a concern if you're creating a multi-language course. So for example, if you have a course with German in it, which typically has longer sentences than you might have in English, there's a worry that, uh, that uh, in the German version of the course, uh, when you switch to German, then it's all going to get cut off or, or overrun. Now, all that Gemma will do is simply reflow that German text and it will just extend this column down. So you don't need to worry about, uh, about that. So, um, so here you can see that it's uh, we've still got side-by-side -side columns, but it's just reflowed the text. But I can also at the top left here say, well, what happens if say, I rotate my iPad? Now here with this theme, uh, Gomez decided we, it still has enough space to have side-by-side -side columns, but also notice that it still completely fills the screen. So it moves the bottom toolbar to the bottom of my iPad screen, and but it doesn't just squash it all into the middle. And this can be the problem that customers report with uh, the challenge of responsive design in, in some tools is that it's not truly responsive. It just reduces the desktop screen down. But in 
GOMO, it will always fill the screen. But the key thing here, if I go back to the top left and select smartphone, now here, instead of just giving me two long thin columns here, it simply stacked those columns. So we have the left hand column followed by the right hand column underneath. And from the learner's perspective, it becomes a simple swipe up and down. And everything else like here, the help and so forth, our table of contents, it all automatically fits in to the smartphone screen. So it gives your learners a great experience on smartphone without you having to do anything. And uh, so let's just uh, dip into the GOMO editor to see how you would actually uh, build this in there, what it actually looks like in the editor. So what I'm going to do is go into my first topic here, because I want to show you the block and column structure in, in the editor. So here we go. So uh, for those of you who are new to the GOMO editor, we have the navigation panel on the left-hand side. This shows me the screens that I have in this particular topic. So it's a topic is this top-level building block, which consists of a series of screens that the learner is going to work through that relates to that topic. When I click on those screens, it loads up the content. Now, from the point of view of responsive design, the, the key thing here is there is no screen size, no canvas size to the content area here. So this can, this can be sort of quite a shock if you are moving from a tool which is based on fixed canvas size, like having to specify 1900 pixel canvas when you start off. Notice that when I created this course, at no point did GOMO actually say, you know, what canvas size do you want or do you want to support an iPhone 13 and a Samsung Galaxy tab? GOMO is going to just deal with that so we don't need to worry. So the key thing here is that we're not having to position our text, say, 100 pixels from the top, 50 pixels from the left, because that might work okay if you're just thinking in terms of fixed screen size design for desktop, but then by the time you get down to smaller screen sizes, particularly when you get down to smartphone size, that's really not going to make sense. And that's where you end up with this squash down version of a desktop. So instead, as we saw in that preview, GOMO works via these blocks and columns. So if I click on the block there, in my properties on the right, it shows me that I've got a single column at the moment, but I could divide that into more columns. And these columns represent the space, the slots where I can drop in what we call the assets like images and text, but interactive elements like accordions and film strips and so on. And by d dividing your blocks into a certain number of columns, that's how GOMO is going to rework it across screen sizes. So um, that's the notion of responsiveness. But I, I also want to show you a feature of, of GOMO, which is really important in terms of the learner's experience on smartphone, is the uh, concept of adaptiveness. So responsiveness is it just responding to the screen size and adjusting the layout with the columns to, to match the screen size. But by adaptiveness, what we mean is that GOMO will actually change the behavior of certain assets. And the one I want to illustrate that with, I'm just going to add in a new screen here. And I'm going to add in a film strip. So if I go to the assets tab, these are all the different things, what we call the assets that you can add into a GOMO screen. So if I just add in a film strip here. So um, a film strip shows you a sequence of images with associated text. So I'm just going to drop that in there, save that, and I'm just going to preview it. Now, I don't need to preview the whole course. I can preview from the current screen in the editor. I go to the top left, hit the preview icon. Again, it's just going to apply the duo theme here and apply my changes. And so here, we'll first of all be in desktop view. So here, as I click, uh, I can move up. So that works really nicely on, on the desktop as a way to sequence through images and associated text without having to send the learner from screen to screen to screen as if it was a PowerPoint deck. But there's going to be problems with that. By the time you get down to a smartphone view, 
then these navigation buttons are going to be really tricky for the for the learner to be able to hit. So GOMO could be responsive in the sense of it would just scale this all down, but this is where the feature called adaptiveness comes in. But here, if I go here and select, say, an iPhone size, what GOMO does automatically for you is simply convert that film strip into a sequence of images and text. So it becomes, instead of having to try and tap tiny little navigation buttons, again, it becomes a simple swipe up and down. And you'll see this happening with uh, with different uh, assets in GOMO, that uh, GOMO will work out the optimal way to be able to display that particular asset. But the important thing is this is happening automatically. You don't need to do anything to, to make that happen. So here, if I just go back to desktop, we're back to the standard view of the, the film strip. So we've covered two key points here. Responsiveness, how is it going to look as you, how it will reflow the layout of your blocks and columns as you move between screen sizes? And then the notion of adaptiveness, where some of these assets will automatically put themselves into essentially a completely different format automatically to give a better experience to your learners on smartphone. So. All of those are automatic, but from a point of view of, you, of those of you as learning designers, you can go further than that using a technique that we call display conditions. Now, display conditions are a way to be able to show and hide things on the screen based on certain things happening. So my colleague Jonathan last week, if you tuned into that, he was showing the use of display conditions for content locking so that you can stop somebody moving to the next screen until they've watched all of a video or until they've uh, answered a question or even uh, creating menu locking. So for example, you can't do the assessment till you've looked at all the learning topics. But the display condition I want to use today is the one to do with um, the device type. So again, just to point out, you don't have to use this, that we've seen that a GOMA course will automatically run across any screen size and any device. But from a design point of view here, when I have this screen, I've got the text on the left and the image on the right. And that looks, uh, that looks nice on, um, here if we go back, say on desktop and on tablet. So if I go to tablet, there's enough space here. But actually, by the time we get to smartphone, I might say, well, actually, I only put in that image just to balance out the text when you're looking at it on the desktop or tablet view. And it's not really adding much to the learning. So what I can do here is I could actually just add in a display condition. So I just click on the image and I can add a display condition. So this is how I tell GOMO when this should appear on the screen. So I say add display condition. I've got lots and lots of different display conditions here, but the one I want to use today is device type display condition. Now I need to tell GOMO, okay, based on device type, when do I want this to appear? So here I could say, well, I want it to appear on desktop and I want it to appear on tablet, but I don't want it to appear on smartphone. So I can simply use the logic to say, show this if it's not a smartphone. And I could apply this to, to any content. So you could actually be changing the, say, the text as well, depending on whether you're looking at it on desktop, tablet, or smartphone. But let's just have a look at this. This is the most common usage, just to hide things which really don't add anything in terms of the smartphone view. So I'm just going to go back in here. I'm just going to, uh, to refresh this. We'll go back to our desktop view. So it's just going to apply my changes. And let's just move back to that uh, screen that we've just edited. So here we are in desktop view, no changes at all because um, we're still seeing the image. If I go to tablet, still sees the image. But if I go to smartphone, that display condition has kicked in. It's saying I'm now in smartphone mode, therefore that display condition is no longer valid, so it's going to just hide that image. So here, I don't have to do any swiping up and down. I just get the core of the learning content, which is in this case, the text. 
So just bear in mind that if you really want to craft that mobile experience, then you can use the uh, the uh, device type display condition. So let, let me just uh, recap on that. So what I did there was just highlight the particular thing I want to add the display condition to. Um, and you can apply display conditions to any element on the screen. And the one that I chose was the device type display condition. And then you just choose the logic. And the logic for me was to say, well, if it's not a smartphone, namely if it's a tablet or desktop, then show that image. But if it is a smartphone, then hide it. So we've covered uh, responsiveness, adaptiveness, and then the use of display conditions to go even further with your, uh, particularly with your um, smartphone delivery of your content. Um, but uh, finally, what I want to show you is uh, the brand new Vinti theme, as I mentioned, just released this morning. Uh, our development team has put a lot of effort into this based on customer feedback. So I'm just going to, to show you this. And so this is the Vinti theme that all the default settings applied to um, just the standard course here. And the first thing to point out is for those of you who are familiar with GOMO, is that in the Vinti theme, we don't have just a top and a bottom navigation uh, toolbar here. Instead, it's grouping them to the sides and to the top there. So it gives it quite a nice contemporary feel. Everything just works as it would before, but it's all anchored in these different ones there. And also we've got these nice animation effects there and things like the glossary, also things like the slide out table of contents. You've got those nice animations on the different topics you can jump to. Um, but what I do want to show you is that the way that this then works in mobile view. So here, if I reduce the screen size down, what we'll see here, let me just uh, refresh that. In fact, let me just go into the preview of this. So uh, if you just bear with me a moment, I'll just go back to, so I want to show the actual design of this. And uh, we'll just have a look at the course itself, theme examples, standard themes. And now my new Vinti theme. So let's just preview this. So, so here with Vinti, in, in, in addition to the new, the new look here, what we now have, when you go into mobile view, rather than crowding the screen uh, with the other themes that you would get the, the toolbar appearing at the bottom and the top, but now we now group these into here, the table of contents. So now when you click on that, uh, that donut icon there, or burger icon, I suppose it should be called, um, that it's all actually gathered here. So those elements only appear when you tap there, so I can get to it's like my glossary, and then when I close that, it's now freeing up this screen real estate, so it's all just condensed into there. So it gives a far more mobile friendly experience. So you just click, you've still got your table of contents, but then you have your additional elements like menu, help, glossary, and so forth contained within that that then just hide. And again, everything else just responds as you'd expect in here. So if I want to go back to the menu, I can just click there and go to my presentation assets and so forth. And there we've got the, the navigate. You can notice that the navigation buttons to go from screen to screen move to the top there. So it's not taking up any space at the side. It just becomes an obvious way to tap or swipe from screen to screen there. 
So um, I can see that we've got a few questions uh, uh, here. So Rebecca, thank you very much for your questions. Um, you should see that Vinti theme automatically in your account. It would have been released into all existing GOMO accounts. So uh, you should just see it if I just go back into here. Um, so either when you create a new course or if you want to apply it to existing courses, you should just see it here, the Vinti theme appearing in the fourth position. It's likely um, that once the theme settles in and uh, we find that people like it, we'll actually move it to be the default theme because it is, to say, it is a re really nice looking theme and I really like that responsive layout on, on Sparkphone. Uh, if for whatever reason you can't see it in, in your th pool of themes, then do just raise the support ticket. But I think uh, it automatically appeared in, in my account here, so it should do in yours as well. Uh, so uh, just before we close this, this short webinar about responsiveness, um, does anybody have any further questions either about responsive adaptiveness, the Vinti theme, or, or in fact about any other aspect of GOMO that I can help with? So do just put your questions into the question box. Okay, I can't see any questions coming through, but if you do have any specific questions, then uh, please feel free to reach out directly to me. I'm just going to put my direct email address into the chat box. So I'm, I'm Hugh Edwards. Uh, let me just pop that in there. So there's my direct email address there, or you can just from our website, click on the, that's gummilearning.com, click on the contact us button. And also if you're completely new to GOMO and you don't ha yet have a trial account, then again, you can sign up. I just bring that on screen. So here that uh, you can just, uh, request a free trial there and we'll get you set up with a GOMO trial account and you can try out all of these things yourself. It's the full system for you to try it for 21 days. Also, if you want to contact us, just click on the contact us uh, form here and we'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Well, thank you very much everyone for joining in today. We really appreciate your time. So uh, we have uh, another uh, webinar coming up next week uh, and you'll get notifications about that. So please keep an eye out for that. Uh, so we're addressing different aspects of GOMO uh, each week in this series of webinars. So uh, thank you very much for today and uh, do let us know how you get on with uh, what I've just been showing you and have a great day.